Hi everybody, name's Tux Martini. Welcome to Talking with Tux. This is our first episode. What I aim to do is to connect with people, have fun, and bring them first class entertainment. What our goals for the future is? Uh, first I'd like to do restaurant reviews, comedic skits, and also recipes. For right now we're just having a regular old talk show and bringing all my close and personal friends. Speaking of close personal friends, this is my friend, an artist, a philosopher, theoretical physicist, and master, master of martial arts, Master Broku. Namaste, Master. Are you high? So as I said, in the future we hope to bring you higher quality entertainment, you know, better lighting, mics and such, also to do restaurant reviews, comedic skits, and bring you all sorts of wacky recipes. And live dog fights. Yes, live dog fights. Who let the dogs out? Yeah, that's an old reference. The new song is the what's that song? Uh, Butcher Pete. Everybody Butcher loves Pete. Butcher Pete. Yes, everybody does love Butcher Pete. So, first of all, let's uh, get to what we're going to talk about today. Yes. What, me? Oh, you want to talk to me? Yes, I'm talking I to thought, you. All right. Usually the host goes first. But yes, okay. but actually... Well, I, uh, just if I could do a quick review of a movie I saw a few days ago. I finally saw that Noah's Ark movie. You know, the one with uh, Russell Crowe? Mm. It's okay. You know, if I had to score it on this board, I'd give it maybe like an 8 or a 7. Basically, in short, there's like giant rock angels that helped him build the Ark. And apparently Cain, who's like from Cain and Abel, is in there. And he's got an army or something. And blah blah blah. Halfway through the movie, he tries to kill his granddaughters. And I skip a few few scenes later. He's then there's all these rainbows in the sky, and it's like, oh wow, rainbows! Yeah, it was, a, it was an all right movie. Our main topic today is hype, and uh, you know, contrasting and conflicting opinions. Mm -hmm. Like, who here has fallen for hype? Like, yeah, for example, I have. All right. You ever play a game called Project Cross Zone? Yes, I have it. Yeah. It was a. Uh, Kind of disappointing. Kind of disappointing, actually. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I was thrilled to get it and play it, but it, the, the problem with it was too easy. And you know, often enough, you have these big block budget uh, games that come out. You know, you got your uh, Destiny. Which, and you see the reviews like, uh, mediocre. Uh. And uh, that's kind of the point. I mean, there's been many games, and I've bought into it, unfortunately, of my youthful stupidity, like, Sonic 06, Shadow of the Hedgehog. Don't judge me, I'm a Sonic fan. Yeah, uh, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sonic used to be good. That's all I can say. And now, now there's Sonic 14, and I'm not even touching that one. Now, there's still a good couple of ones for cell phones and emulators. I mean, I arguably so, the, his heyday was the Dreamcast days with Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, which was arguably the better game, and I will argue that because personally I think Sonic Adventure was the... Uh, the better game. But anyway, back to the hype overall, I mean, also movie hype and anime hype, and I'm going to go on a rant on this, do forgive me, but, you know, mm -hmm. hype can spoil it for a lot of people, like, there's this popular anime, I won't name names, but it's but been it's... overly hyped, and it's like, everyone, I mean, everyone, it's critically and commercially acclaimed, and everyone thinks it's the best thing in the universe. But, you know, if you overhype something, I mean, you get a hundred people a day talking about it on Facebook, you're going to kill it for someone. You know, case in point, I've got a friend um, who refuses to watch that anime. Um, just because of the, the publicity it's, you know, been receiving, you know. And it's still receiving to this day, and it's now a couple years old by this time. But still, so it just killed it, and, you know... Not to beat on a dead horse, but this anime... I haven't seen it myself. I'd like to give it a shot, but still it's talked about too much. Give it a shot. What are you um, gonna lose? It's not like it's going to jump out and you know, strangle you. I, I think it might, you know. Although that does remind me of a video I saw. I think it was um, Videodrome, or maybe it was The Ring about a tape that kills people. Can't really remember it, but... Uh, yeah, it turned me on. A lot of strangulations in that movie. Hot. All right, fair enough. But yeah, you know, I, I see what you're saying. You know, usually people overhype things. Like, there's this one gaming console, the Phantom. It was gonna be like this sort of like competitor between Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony. And basically, the people who made it kind of, you know, they fell through. It didn't really come to pass. 
which actually has me curious. What would what would the Phantom actually look like? They showed some concept sketches and rough uh, 3D models. I don't know. I'm thinking something a lot like the Ouya. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing, man. The Ouya. That thing ooh, didn't didn't survive. It was like. Well, I can't say anything that won't offend anybody, but it was basically just, you know, not, I, I, I can't say it. I, it just, it, it, it was hyped as the biggest thing ever, and it just died a slow, quiet death. Okay. I, I, I kind of see what you're saying. It's like a newborn puppy that doesn't quite make it. <laughs> I think you're a lizard sometimes. Who told you? Did David I tell you? <laughs> Illuminati 2014. <laughs> Speaking of 2014, we are slowly rolling into 2015. This year has just felt like it's passed by forever. Um, it went by in the blink of an eye for me, um, just with my professional life, you know. Yeah, for me it went by kind of slow. Like, I don't know, a good analogy would be 2014 is like when you're constipated on the toilet seconds before your favorite show is about to come on. <laughs> That's what 2014 was to me, you know. For me, it's like a midnight run at Taco Bell. You're like really hungry, you want to get it over with, and you're looking for a quick fix, and there you are at Taco Bell, and you got like five bucks in your pocket, and you say, you know what? It's just going to be quick and painless. Yeah, I mean, like, if you want to yeah. blow five dollars on the stomach pains, just give me five dollars, I'll punch it in the stomach. Good to know, we might keep that in mind. We might do a fight club. Ah, come on, you can't do a fight club. <laughs> You know what's interesting about that movie? Ever since it came out, you had like actual little underground fight clubs that popped up. I know, and that, that I think that takes away from the premise of the movie. Yeah, it's like it's basically speaking out against things that are mainstream, and it's itself mainstream. sort of turned mainstream. Yeah, just like the Lorax movie that dropped out. It was a it was a message that was really anti capitalist, and it's made tons of money in merchandise. That's irony for you. I think Dr. Seuss is rolling in his frickin' grave, you know? I think so. Like, he'd be pretty peed off if he saw this. I agree with you offhand, you know? Speaking of dead, uh, beloved children's entertainers, you know, such as Dr. Seuss, what about Walt Disney? What do you think he'd be, you know, thinking right now if he were alive or if he were some sort of sentient ghost? Well, he probably wouldn't be, like, too happy with certain things, like... For instance, the Princess and the Frog. Here's a quick scenario. Sir, Mr. Disney, we have this idea. You, you know, the, prin the Princess and the Frog classic story? Yes, yes, I know that. Yes, now, we were thinking it'd be set in Louisiana. Oh, okay. And it's about this black waitress. Stop. Stop. Stop, stop right stop, there. Stop. Stop. <laughs> nah, I can't. No disrespect to Disney. Back to a uh, hype in movie reviews and video games and yeah, anime. we're really going off topic here. <laughs> I know. But that's the great thing about this show. We'll pick one topic, and then whatever else happens is fair game. Yeah. Unless we're talking about politics, that that's kind of a dead subject. I don't like to get scooped nah, up politics. Nah, we're going to try to avoid politics from this further junction. Yep, just movies, what anime, animal would win the fight, video anime, games. Uh, Celebrities who died in crazy ways and butts. That's what we're going to mainly talk about. Butts. I like big butts and I, I can't lie. Well, moving on. I think Scarlett Johansson's hot. I, I think we all do. I, I think we all do. And Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> she hot. I don't care who knows her. She hot. <coughs> Betty White. She hot. What is the logic behind that? She got pretty eyes. I like a girl with pretty eyes. Was it because she was in that Snickers commercial? No, she just has pretty eyes. You know how I feel about pretty eyes, boy. All right. I I'm going to lock my door at nights. Oh, you better lock that door. The boogeyman is coming for you tonight. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Why am I talking like a Cajun? Speaking of on the topic of hype, since we have only but a few minutes left, um, what superpower do you think is overly hyped? Overly hyped, I would probably say flying. I know flying would be the practical, but how would you fly? I mean, what what kind of energy do you think it takes for a human to fly? Solar gravity. Anyway, uh, superpowers that are overrated. People say immortality is a curse. 
It kind of is, but it, it could be a good thing too. But what if you're like in your 20s and you get immortality? Because from what I saw in a lot of movies, all the guys who gain immortalities are somewhere in their like late 50s and they kind of have a bad hip. Yeah. You have that bad hip forever, dude. You got to get immortal when you're like in your 20s. 20s yeah. I agree, but yeah, that that'd be practical. But think about it: everyone you ever love will, love will yeah, die. That would suck, but you know, hey. Man, but you'll see history. You'll see. Does immortality equate bulletproof? Like. Well, you can get shot and hurt, but you won't die from it. I mean, think about it. You know, mm. if you get shot, it's, yeah, it's going to hurt. The bullet's mm. going to be in there, but the flesh healing Would yourself, you still feel pain? Yeah. Yeah, of course you would feel pain, man. You know, But at the same time, you can't really get sick or get too hurt. Very true. That's the blessing of immortality. I'd say it's a double-edged sword, personally. I wouldn't mind it. Fair enough. I would walk into a bank and just for just for kicks and giggles, I would say I'm holding this bank up. Someone, you know, try and get me. I'm immortal. You can't get me. That would be a cruel prank to pull on somebody, wouldn't it? Tell them that they're immortal and send them outside. Exactly. <laughs> that would be an awesome movie, though. Uh, that'd be like a five-minute movie. Yeah, I can I can imagine like maybe a uh, what's that guy? Steve Carell playing the guy. Yeah. He's, like, very neurotic, doesn't want to get out of the house, and then, like, a friend's friend who's, like, a supposed psychic or witch. Or cousin or whoever. Yeah, says, you're from now on, you're immortal. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Maybe even Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Of course, with Jim Carrey, you run the risk of it being a liar, liar clone. Or like that other movie he did, Yes Man. Oh, yeah. It was still a good movie, but it was a kind of a carbon copy of Liar, Liar. Very true. Getting off topic again. And no worries. No worries at all. Let's just call this the off-topic podcast or whatever this is. Fair enough. I mean, in the future we have hope to have a semblance of a format, but no worries. Yeah, you know, back on the hype, there was the Macarena, and then years later, there was what, Gungan style? Oh, yeah. I guess like in like 15 years, like the kids' grandkids are going to be like, hey, hey, you remember the Gungan style? You remember that stupid dance we used to do? Yeah. All right, and also speaking about the hype things like food, like uh, hot pockets. Yeah, hot pockets suck. They're, they're they're delicious, but they're bad for you. They're like, it's like the equivalent of ingesting a cigarette, a carton of tasty cigarettes, and you pop in the microwave and gives you explosive diarrhea. I think we only have two more minutes. All right. Um, well, in which case, this uh, was our first episode. Yes. Uh, thank you for those who are watching us. Yeah. Now, if you have any questions or comments, uh, or you know, for advice or anything, or want to drop me a line, check me out on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, mm -hmm. at Tex Martini. And if you guys want some quick dice action, I'll be behind the alley with a shotgun of Jagermeister. Oh. Nah, so I'm messing around. Yeah. We'll have Broku back. Maybe, maybe if I'm not busy sleeping in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. Of ice. And broken glass. And broken dreams and hope. Anyway, as I was saying... Society is the cruel mistress that carries the whip of failure. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. So, if you have any questions that uh, want me to give you advice on anything from relationships to pet nutrition to flea stuff, drop me a line, text Martini. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. So that's it for today's episode. Um, look forward to the next one. And remember, you are tomorrow's grandpa. Amen. Hey folks, thank you for catching Talking with Tux. If you have any questions, drop me a line at Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter, and I'll be sure to answer them on the next show. Until next time, this is Tux Martini signing off. See you next time.